People are always worried about the Travis Scott Jordan ones, but these, these are the ones that people should be worried about. What's up, sneak people? It's your boy FB Kicks in Gear, and I am back with another legit check guide, and we are again dealing with the Jordan 1 High Chicago Lost and Found. And I mentioned it in a little snippet in the beginning of the video, but uh, it blows my mind that people are so wrapped up in the same kind of set of reps like when it comes to the Travis Scott Jordan 1 lows and highs, but these right here are arguably the best reps that are on the market right now and the ones that people should be concerned about the most, right? Maybe they don't go for as much as Travis Scott Jordan 1s go for, but they still go for a pretty decent penny, four or $500 depending on your size. And the reps are already out here in full scam mode, in my opinion. And I don't hear enough people talking about this. Uh, and I'm sure there's gotta be people out there scamming, but you know what? I make this video series so that we can, even for the super close ones, we can differentiate between the real and the fake pair. And that's what we are gonna do here. But just like in the beginning of every video, I want to point out two things. One, you will be able to find all the pictures you need for this shoe on the Instagram account that's gonna pop up on the screen. There's nothing more important when it comes to legit checking than knowing your details, knowing what things are supposed to be there and what things aren't supposed to be there. It's really important to know those things. So going to that Instagram account, looking at the details of the shoe will help with that. And the second thing that I wanted to bring up is, you guys know we're on Discord, right? Join the Discord channel, link is in the description. We are there to talk about legit checking, we're here to talk about rep shoes, we're here to talk about authentic shoes, streetwear, all of that good stuff, what have you. It's a community and we're talking about cool shit. So if you want to chop it up with me, if you wanna chop it up with other like-minded individuals, join the Discord and let's get to it. So with all that said guys, let's start getting into the shoes. And you guys know at this point, this is probably like my fifth, sixth, seventh lost and found legit check guide. You know that the easiest thing to hone in on when it comes to the lost and founds is not even with the shoes itself. It is with the sticker on the box. So that's what we're gonna start. I tell you guys in every damn video that this sticker is actually a huge, huge, helpful legit checking tool when it comes to the lost and found. And the reason why is because for so long, reps were not making the sticker correct. If you look at the authentic sticker here, you can see clearly that the sharp edges are, the edges are sharp. You see that the corners are sharp, the well-defined, you see tons of angles. That's the way it's supposed to be. Reps for the longest time had rounded edges, smooth corners, it was like night and day. And not only that, the colors were a little bit different as well. You can see this bright lemony yellow kind of color. That's what they're supposed to look like. Now, when we look at today's rep, you can see that those corners are sharp. They have caught on to the things that I've been saying and they realize that they had to update the sticker to fool more people and look at that those corners are sharp when it comes to the color they are almost identical the rep is just a bit more vibrant of a yellow than the authentic and it comes off when you see it side by side the yellow is a little bit paler on the authentic but more or less the sales stickers look around the same in terms of the text but positioning is where it's supposed to be you want to see it somewhere in and around that swoosh uh, generally, I see the authentic pairs have it towards the end of the swoosh, but I have seen some authentic pairs that have it down here positioned. So um, pay attention to that. That sticker is such low hanging fruit when it comes to legit checking. So make sure y'all don't miss that. The next thing that we'll talk about, and it has nothing to do with the shoes itself, again, is the ticket. This is the authentic ticket here. And you guys know at this point, the things that we look for when we're talking about the ticket. You wanna make sure that you see the signatures specifically when you call out Paul L and Leah N. Look how thin and dainty that cursive signature is compared to the date, compared to the body of the text here. 
right? And another thing that we want to make sure that we're paying attention to is looking at specifically the text in the bottom corner. Notice how that's like smudged and over copied and hard to read. Obviously you can make out what the numbers are, but it's a little bit difficult to actually read. That's the way it's supposed to be. Now, for the longest time, if you look at some of my older videos, when these first came out, the reps did not get this ticket right at all. The text was always different. They really didn't mimic that old receipt type of vibe that this gives off. Uh, this feels like it's from the late 80s and the reps just had crisp text everywhere. The font and weight of the names was different. The weight of the text on the body were different. It was all different. Now let's pull out the rep and see what it looks like in comparison to the authentic. Pulling this out, you can see that like similar to other updated pairs that I've reviewed, they have really, really gotten the details exact. Look at the thin text on the signatures for Paul L and Leah N, just like the authentic. Look at that smudged text at the bottom corner. Not crisp and clean like the authentic. The only real thing that I can say when it comes to this is that the authentic receipt paper is darker while the rep is just more washed out. That's just what it is. But these tickets in and of themselves have come leaps and bounds since the original release and the original reps. But this is crazy. This is dangerous and make sure that you know what you're looking for when you look at these tickets because uh, rumor has it that these were originally included to be a legit checking indicator for Nike. And that's a great idea because for a long time, reps were failing this right off the bat. So um, those are the two kind of main important things that I wanna look at when it comes to the box. Um, I won't really go into detail about the color of the box or the paper on the inside. It's not really worth going into when these are such awesome indicators already. So with that said, let's get into the shoes and we'll see what our typical legit checking finders come out to. So on my left, we have my authentic pair and on my right, we have the rep. Now, just having them side by side like this, I want you guys to write in the comments right now, tell me what you think um, is different and what makes the rep stand out when you compare it to the authentic pair. While you do that, I'll talk about the shoe a little bit. Um, the whole selling point on this shoe, the whole reimagined factor of this shoe is that um, it's aged, obviously. You've got the cracked collars, you've got the cracked white leather on the toe box, on the uh, side of the shoe, and the whole point of this is that like no two shoes look the same, and this release exemplified that to a T. I've had three authentic lost and founds and not one of them has matched up identically to each other, right? But there are a few things that you can point to that definitely have to be right in terms of materials, in terms of color. Um, not a lot of things, but there are definitely things that you can point to and I'm gonna point to them right now. The first and most infamous sign when it comes to the lost and founds is on the back of the tongue. And for those of you who have already watched my videos, you know what I mean. When you look at China and the back of this Nike AirTag, you see that little point on the A. Looks like a little piece of thread that comes out the top and it's on both shoes. That little detail is literally what separates a real shoe from a fake shoe in like 99% of the cases. Every rep that I've reviewed up into this point, every rep that I've compared to an authentic pair does not have that little pointed A. And when you look at this one, it doesn't have it either. Now there are stipulations to that rule. Uh, authentic pairs in a size 13 and up do not have that as well. They don't have the pointed A. Uh, the backstory behind that is um, it doesn't just take place on this specific release, but Jordan 1s in general, the something changes with the size tag once you get up to the bigger sizes. Uh, I don't know why Nike does it. Maybe it's a proportion thing, and because it's a bigger size tag or because it's a bigger Nike Air tag, they stitch it differently. I don't know, but 
all that to say they're not present on size 13s and up but on size 12 and down they are present for 99.999 percent and i i can't say 100 percent because i haven't looked at 100 percent of the pairs but 99.99 percent of the pairs um, will have that pointed a and you look in the comments of all my other videos on this series you'll see that people confirmed it themselves so that is the easiest thing reps do not get that right and uh, i hope they continue not to get it right because uh, it is a super solid way to differentiate the real from the fake but the next thing that i like to point out especially when it comes to the tongue is specifically the color of the tongue obviously jordan ones have a padded tongue and there's foam underneath the nylon but the unique combination of whatever the color foam is on the inside of here it's got like a uh, obviously it's almost like a like a tannish exposed foam whatever that foam is under here it shines through or it comes through underneath the nylon or whatever material that they use for the tongue now for the authentic pairs it comes through as a tan almost like a off-white kind of cream color on reps they tend to have a slight pink hue to it because they use a slightly different uh color foam and and you can see while these are super close they the reps just have a slightly pinker hue to them than the authentic pair does when you put them side by side it's pretty visible to see in person i don't know how it's coming off to you guys in the studio lights but i can tell you that visibly it's different you can see it in tonally uh and then uh the next thing that tends to be different is while on the authentic pairs the border around the tongue tends to be um, a little bit of an off-white aged white while reps tend to get it super either super white and bright white or they're like transparent and the foam kind of peeks through and they get kind of pink so the rep pair is definitely a little bit brighter of a white than the rep is when you look at them side by side but still very 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 difficult to tell uh, you will probably need an authentic pair uh, to reference at least in hand if you're going to be doing these legit checks because they're really hard to tell the next thing that i like to look at and compare is the shape of the shoe the shape of these lost and founds is different than any other jordan one that nike has released up until this point but that shape difference kind of shows itself differently throughout the shoe and the reps have done a pretty good job of getting the toe box shape correct the profile of it where they seem to uh, fall short is when it comes to the back shape the reps tend to be taller than the authentic pairs as you can see here and the authentic pair seems to be fatter and bulkier uh, especially from the back view than the rep does and that always seems to be the case for whatever reason it feels like that the reps are um, doing they're trying to change that shape but they're still really holding to the jordan one high og shape which honestly makes them inaccurate in that sense but it's still really hard to tell if you don't know or don't have experience with the authentic pair so from there everything else is pretty much up to variables here uh, the special dyed red leather of this shoe uh, causes it to bleed and the red is like not consistent throughout pairs or even throughout the entire shoe and that carries out to the rep as well um, one of the things that i've noticed is the reps tend to have more of a rose red uh, if that makes sense as opposed to a bright chicago red hopefully that comes through on here for you guys as well you can really see that that height difference from the authentic pair to the rep uh, that's just something that I tend to see more often on reps that color but uh, who's to say that that won't be the case on authentic pairs but I see it mostly on reps but other than that um, the materials are exactly the same I don't know how they found this aging material but they did and uh, that's what makes this shoe so hard to legit check because there are so many different ways that the authentic pair can look it leaves a lot of space for the rep to come in and be accurate so that's what's been happening other than that guys honestly 
when it comes after the a trick and the color of the tongue uh, everything else is a crapshoot uh, you really have to know your shapes you really have to kind of know the shoe to understand what the differences can be but um, i'm not going to waste your time with anything else i have done this video over and over and over again these reps are just getting better and they're just getting more dangerous so uh, remember you can see as many pictures as you need of these on instagram on the account that's popping up on the screen pay attention guys because the details are important and remember to join our discord so that we can chop it up and talk more about shoes but with all that said guys i'll see you in the next one peace